What's up everyone? Tales of the Empire comes out tomorrow. I got the chance to join a roundtable interview with Diana Lee Inosanto, who plays Morgan Elsbeth, along with several other Star Wars creators and podcasters. This is the full discussion. There aren't any major spoilers or anything, but as usual, you can glean some hints from something like this, so if you want to watch Tales of the Empire with as little knowledge as possible, this is your warning. That said, enjoy the interview. Hi Diana, really nice to meet you and speak with you. Hi guys, welcome to my home everyone. So much of Morgan Elspeth in live action comes through her body language. You do such a great job playing that that stoic body uh, uh, on, on frame. What was it like to play the character in animation and not have that acting tool to lean on? It was really nice that I don't have sore muscles. <laughs> to animation for sure. But no, I... Uh... I was absolutely over the moon. Um, I always say I have once in a while these amazing joy attacks, and that's what uh, happened for me doing Tales of the Empire. Um, I I cannot get over the amazing approach and quality of the fight scenes in this because even with the trailer, I have been having people at Comic Cons ask me if I did mocap, and I my hat goes off to the Lucasfilm animation team um, that did that really uh, concentrated on the fight scenes and they did an incredible job. And I know it was under the leadership of, I believe, uh, Stuart Lee. And uh, he does a whole homage to uh, my godfather, the late Bruce Lee and my dad. They looked at uh, martial arts. They did a YouTube. Uh, they studied my fights on Mandalorian and Ahsoka. And it's just brilliant how they put it all together. It really is. I'm stunned. I'm amazed as a martial artist. Hi, Diana. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us. How do you go about taking your live action character and bringing it to life in animation? Is there anything different you had to do with your voice or your mannerisms? It's still the same approach. Uh, I'm, sh I'm sure everybody's seen the beautiful footage of Pedro going into his character, right? When he's voicing uh, Mando, same thing. I, I make the commitment in the room and in the space in the recording room and uh, I do the same breathing. I will jump in place. I will literally grab a pin and make it all of a sudden my sword. Just anything that will give me that space and that place of being in the moment as 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 Morgan Elspeth. So uh, kudos to my uh, theater teachers <laughs> for teaching me that technique because it really did uh, help me in the recording room with Dave. And then of course, Dave's there to give me notes and to explore different choices and ways and approach to saying the line. And uh, I, I love the finished uh, product here. I think people are going to enjoy Tales of the Empire. Hi, this is Alex from Star Wars Explained. Uh, Tales of the Empire, hi, gives hi. us significant details of Morgan Elizabeth's backstory. I'm curious if you were told any of those details so that you could use it in your live action performance in Ahsoka. It was spoon fed to me, Alex. <laughs> it was spoon fed to me. But good thing is Dave was so specific and so, so uh, strategic. Um, I did my own homework as well. You know, I watched the Clone Wars and Rebels, uh, but I also read Timothy Zahn's books. Uh, I felt that most likely that Morgan would have a certain common ground with the people that uh, Thrawn chose to be in his inner circle as well. Uh, and then later on, and I, E. Ann Convery, her, her short story called Bug was also very important to me. But I still, even up to that point, didn't know if Morgan was truly on Dathomir seeing Grievous mow through her people. Um, so uh, when I finally got the script for Tales of the Empire, I was absolutely thrilled. I was so energized by just the opening sequence. And and I think, too, it gives people a different taste of Morgan's background, her world, and what drives her. And more important, the love she has for her people. Hi, I'm Caitlin from Sky Talkers. So great to talk to you today, Diana. Great to talk with you, too. Thank you. Uh, my question is, were there any key words or themes that Dave or the rest of the creative team gave you when thinking about Morgan Elsbeth in this time period? In uh, when you say time period, are we talking like uh, Morgan as a child, Morgan as or teenage girl, I should say, or <laughs> it is with Thrawn with her time with Thrawn and in that time period? You know, I, I think what I keyed on more is the importance of being uh, not that they gave me anything other than I knew from the writing, from the writing itself that it was important somehow that Morgan was recognized for her brilliance and her intelligence 
I mean, this is a woman that helped engineer the Navy, you know, and all that we see of the empire. And I'm, and I think it's just brilliant that, um, that uh, Ron knew that this is the woman to share an alliance with. And I think that's what, uh, what was really coming off the pages. The ra the writing makes it so easy for me. And, and if there was anything, Dave was there to explain the choices that we could explore in real time. Hello there, Mark from Fantatrax here. Um, hello. Uh, Morgan has a tragic past, definitely has a tragic past. What did you learn about her character that you just didn't realize before from what you see in Tales of the Empire? What I learned uh, very quickly, if you see that first opening sequence, is uh, as much as there's chaos going on around her, it is truly that this woman not only is has the capacity to feel vulnerable, but she also has the capacity to love. And the relationship with her mother, that to me just screamed at me. And uh, to see how she would lose her mother, but yet her mother was a role model to her of sacrifice and uh, being able to defend and protect her daughter and to be this incredible woman warrior. So that was the kind of role modeling she had from her mother. And I think that kind of role modeling, I realized helped her survive the, the rest of her journey through the galaxy. And that's what I learned for myself. Hi, Miss Diana. Hi, love the shirt. Thank you, Summer. <laughs> I love it. Morgan L. Smith and Thrawn share a very nuanced relationship. How do their interactions shape each other's development, drawing out both strengths and weaknesses? Ooh, ooh, very philosophical question here. Um, you know, for for what I love is that um, Thrawn saw something in Morgan. He saw that she was not just smart, but she was tenacious and, and also... Um, in many ways, they were outsiders, right? And so they were probably realized that in some ways, when you're an outsider trying to navigate the empire, that could be possibly maybe a weak position, but not for those two. You know, they knew that they both were brilliant, had great minds. And I love that Thrawn wanted to recruit Morgan and bring her into his circle because there was a whole new uh, agenda for, for Thrawn, right? But also for Morgan, wanting inevitably, as we would see in Ahsoka, to restore Daphomir. So yeah, that's what I uh, I got from the relationship. Hi, this is Trisha Barr from Fangirls Going Rogue podcast. Hey. Uh, you've been making the convention tour. What have you learned from fans about why Morgan resonates with them? Oh, great question. Uh, first of all, what I'm learning is, uh, particularly from women, there's two things, is that they love seeing a, a, a strong woman, a woman warrior, a, a woman that can survive uh, and weather hard times and be able to navigate and survive, even if the, the world may say things like you're not wanted, you're not needed, not validate you. That's what I think what women I have uh you know, interfaced with have said, but the interesting thing for me is also the response of men. And I've had so many men say, oh my gosh, I have my daughter now in martial arts or, oh my gosh, I want my daughter to be strong and to be able to grow up and be able to, to navigate uh, their life, you know, her life. And it's, it's been great. She's been a role model to both men and women in a different, unique way, even though she's kind of a villain, um, I think uh, people do can take from Morgan um, some of the positive aspects of her character and just go, wow, you know, um, we love her strength. Thank you. Right, thank you. Hello. Th thanks so much for being here with all of us. Uh, I'm Dan Tiff from Coffee with Kenobi. Hi. Yes. Hello. Nice That's great. <laughs> yeah, you as well. You as well. I, I, Morgan is so fascinating because she's got this wonderful paradox, right? She's incredibly disciplined and focused, but she's also so angry and volatile and, and with good reason. We certainly learn a lot more about that through Tales of the Empire. How do you kind of process and navigate that uh, as an actor and a performer? You know, uh, it's interesting because I would have these talks with, with uh, Dave because, you know, even though technically she's classified as the villain in Mandalorian Ahsoka, you know, what I'm really relieved is that when you watch Tales of the Empire, and for, for me, this is what I see, is nobody ever sees themselves as a villain, right? They just have certain needs and um, and certain goals, and they're hoping to accomplish that. And 
I love that we see the vulnerability in, um, in Morgan. I love that we see that she also in her way a long time ago had the ability to love and be loved by her mother and by her fellow night sisters. And, you know, it's just unfortunate that by seeing such chaos and annihilation of her people, that this, she developed this armor of anger. And so um, in a way for me, psychologically, it was, she's a fascinating character because there are aspects I think we all can relate to if we've gone through something very horrible in our lives that we, you know, that there are times where you do what you have to do to be a survivor. Um, I just think it's fascinating the choices that she has made compared to like an Ahsoka um, and how that uh, manifested down the road for her. So yeah, that's what I find interesting in this whole journey of playing Morgan Elspeth. Hey, hey there. We are Richard and Sarah from Skywalking Through Neverland. Oh, I love that. <laughs> now, I love in Tales of the Empire that the primary imagery we see behind Morgan is fire. And I wanted to know, did Dave Filoni show you any kind of concept art with fire? And what do you think this says about her character, that fire? Ooh, yeah. Uh, I noticed that too. And no, uh, I don't kind of think. No, I don't think I did see any concept art. I saw some some earlier concepts of how Morgan would look like. And I go, oh, wow, they they had a, you know, they did a great job of really capturing, you know, my character. But the fire I love on a symbolic level, you know, to really symbolize her her rage and her her path of vengeance, um, you know, and really the kind of pain she would went through. And that fire is something that's echoed throughout, you know, from starting from Daphimir to all the way to, you know, uh, the moments, uh, you know, cause it's concurrent with right before what happens on, uh, in Mandalorian. And I just thought brilliant, just brilliant to, to the whole animation team. Yeah. Um, we know that we, uh, that you can't speak too much about it. Um, so we're not trying to get any spoilers here, but we were just wondering, do you Keep think you this trouble is here, huh? <laughs> Do you think that this is the last time that we've seen your character or in live action or in animation or both? In in uh both. Do I think? I don't know. But I hope to those Star Wars gods it's not. <laughs> you know, I, I hope that uh that we get to explore her some more. I mean, I still have questions, you know. I I have questions if, you know, how did she get her Beskar spear? That wasn't explained. I have questions like, did she do simple things like ride rancors and Dathomir? Did she know Darth Maul? Did, you know, did she, you know, see Asajj Ventress and go, well, I want to grow up and be like her. You know, I mean, I got all kinds of questions, but yeah, I, I hope uh, it's not. I hope that um, we still, there's more of Morgan Elspeth to come, but who knows, you know, we'll see what the threads of fate decide. I just wanted to take you back to Ahsoka because one of the most gratifying things for all of us fans, was seeing the camaraderie between all of the cast and the crew um, after the show came out. Because obviously we had the writer strikes and we had COVID and we had all those things. So we we all wanted more, but we weren't getting it. And the minute the show had aired and the writer strike and the actor strike had, had finished, we got these amazing, amazing images of all of you from behind the scenes. And it was so gratifying to see. And I just wanted you to talk about the camaraderie with all of your other Ahsoka castmates. Oh, I love this question. You know, I use this term because uh, my grandmother is from Hawaii. She's Filipino Hawaiian. And um, there's that saying called Ohana, you know, meaning family, but it also means you can include people that are not necessarily related to you by blood, but they are like family. And I always use the term Star Wars Ohana. You know, when I see Ivana or Texter, I'm like, oh, hey, Ohana. You know, um, I loved being with Ray when he was alive. I mean, we, you know, formed kind of a very tight uh, family unit and not just cast members uh, with our crew members too. And I feel so privileged and so lucky to be part of that experience because, you know, I've, I've heard and I've seen of some sets where it could be kind of dysfunctional or toxic, but I tell you, for me, the Lucasfilm family is incredible. To me, they are Ohana and we all uh, support each other. We love each other. We're rooting for each other. And uh, I'm just thrilled that I get to be a part of this 
experience and journey with everyone. And so I love that question so much because, um, you know, I especially think about Ray. I, uh, I think about uh, Shauna Tropic, who we loved, who was our our beautiful wardrobe designer, um, you know, and I'm, I know on Mandalorian, we have Carl Weathers that we lost, but you know, um, so when we lose these people, it really feels deeply. And, um, but it's still, um, I don't know, you know, I look to the stars and I'll think of them and um, it's a great experience. And that's not, I'm not just saying that to say that it really is a beautiful experience. And I hope that all people can just experience just a little what I, I I have felt and and the fans too the fans have been incredible and I think they know how much I love Star Wars I always have since I was a little girl uh, I don't want to follow that great question I <laughs> but <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, but I will I'll try um I I love so much that you brought up the Star Wars books and I love that you read some of them to prepare to play Morgan I've been thinking about that short story bug since it came out so I'm curious what did you find most helpful or fun to learn about while you read those stories? Um, it, it helped me, uh, you know, because I wasn't quite sure the background. So for me, it helped fill in the dots where I felt it could help contribute to uh, making my character more uh, realistic and believable. I mean, I love how Timothy Zahn writes uh, Thrawn and all the characters within a circle. So I certainly felt Thrawn would also seek the same kind of, kind of relationship with Morgan, you know, that she was brilliant. She was uh, ahead of her times uh, and um, strong and that he could counter and her loyalty. That's the other thing too. Boy, is she loyal to Thrawn. But uh, I love Ian Convery's book because, you know, you really see like um, uh, that you get a sense of the commitment these women have to each other as a clan and as a family. And I was so happy that I had at my disposal these, you know, these books. I will also say, and I have to give kudos also to uh, Star Wars uh, Fallen Order. I was watching the video clips on YouTube between Cal Kestis and Mirren. I thought that was very important. So I go, oh, Mirren, she's close to a Jedi. Well, then there, it, there, there's a complexity to the Night Sister, and maybe in general, where they could be more you know, dark, or maybe they could be more light. This is fascinating to me. Um, and then of course, I was very lucky that I'm a mom and I grew up, um, I grew up with my kids. I feel like I grew up watching Clone Wars and Rebels. And again, uh, seeing the animation to those shows and understanding um, the Night Sister, um, you know, fellowship was very important and what they mean to each other. So there it is. <laughs>